Today we're going to go ahead and head up to Vail Pass and do some backcountry shooting. Um, I've got a pretty diverse group of riders coming. I've got uh, Chad Otterstrom, who, although he won't admit it, he's an industry legend. Uh, we've got Brent Meyer, who you may have seen on the whacked out sports clips where he does the upside down rail. And then uh, we've got a couple up and comers, Mark and Colin, who are really good kids. Um, they They'll throw a double cork off of pretty much anything, and uh, so hopefully we'll get a couple of those today. And uh, yeah, hoping to get a good uh, mix of stuff, get a couple of cliffs maybe, get a couple of jumps, maybe pow slash, maybe light up some sort of uh, jib at the end of the day. So, what? Well, first thing we'll do is we'll all meet up at the trailhead, and then we'll probably cruise around to a couple of different zones, check out the snow conditions, make sure snowmobilers haven't high marked all the landings and ruined all the, the jump spots. Um, after we check out a couple of zones, then we'll make our decision as to whether to build a jump or to go launch a cliff. And uh, so we'll be snowmobiling out to all these spots, and once we get there, we've all got shovels, and we will... Uh, We'll go ahead and start building the jump. Usually the, usually the jumps we build are about, I don't know, seven or eight feet tall. You, I like to strobe pretty much anything. I'll strobe in the middle of the day, I strobe at night, I'll strobe during milky situations, cloudy, whatever. Um, I run an Allen Chrome setup with a couple of uh, Lumidines. We'll get that going, that makes the rider pop a little better as opposed to just being flat. I don't know. I like flashes a lot because they make things a little more 3D, if you will. Carrying gear deep into the backcountry is kind of a chore. I mean, I, I haul a pretty much a complete lighting kit out into the backcountry with me. Basically, the biggest problem is the fact that I have to strap it to the back of my snowmobile. And when you're out in the backcountry, a lot of times the, the trail will get really whooped out, as we call it. And if so the riders who don't have anything strapped to their sleds, they can just zoom over those whoops like, like nothing. But I gotta go slow because, you know, I've got thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gear on the back of my sled that I don't wanna jiggle into oblivion. So uh, I usually have to take it a little easier than everybody else just to, so I don't break all my gear. You're never guaranteed a good shot. Um, it's not like in the studio where you've got, you know, precise, uh, precise situation and and precise lighting all the time. Basically anytime you're going out, I mean anything could happen. It could be sunny, clouds can roll in, it can start raining, it can start snowing, I mean it can get windy. So I mean there's a lot of it, variables that go into a, a backcountry shoot. Um, snow conditions are one. Um, what you really want is nice cold fluffy snow. Once it gets hotter we call that hot pow. When it gets, uh, when the when the snow gets wet and, and slushy, it's a lot harder to land in. Um, so snow conditions are one variable. You know, the lighting is another variable. Of, you know, obviously if it's just puking snow, you're not going to really be able to see the rider or if, if you can, like, it makes it a lot more difficult to make out the, the ground from the sky and makes for less dramatic shots. A lot of it depends on the riders too. A lot of times, just because you've got a jump built and guys going off of it, that doesn't mean that they're on their game that day. Uh, they may just totally suck, and you don't get anything out of them after you build for eight hours. You know, there's kind of an industry standard method for building jumps. What we do is we we call it blocking, where you take your shovels and you cut out basically large bricks of of hard snow that are usually down. I don't know if foot or two under the top layer of the snow. Then you take those bricks and you basically build like a Lego castle in your spot. So you build the outer walls of your, of your castle and then you fill it in with, uh, with snow. And then that way you've got a kind of a rigid structure on the outside of your jump. So then when you, do, when you go off of it, it doesn't just crush every which direction. It, you actually, you know, it stays nice and, and firm. Depending on how many guys you've got working on a jump, it can take it could take anywhere from an hour to, I mean, I've worked on jumps for probably eight hours before just to get, just to get one jump built. Actually, I've worked on a jump for two days, actually. Basically, how I make a living at this um, is we'll go out and we'll shoot the shots today on spec. And once I get them, first thing I'll do is I'll send them out to all the riders' sponsors. Each rider has different sponsors. And so 
I'll try and sell those images as, you know, either ads or, you know, for web usage or brochures, catalogs, stuff like that. And if whatever doesn't get picked up from the sponsors, then I'm going to send to the magazines and hope that those get picked up. And then whatever doesn't get picked up by magazines, then I'll usually start submitting to, like, various online web magazines or online uh, just snowboard sites. It depends on the season. Sometimes I have staff gigs, and when I have staff gigs, then I'm getting paid, you know, a salary, basically. Um, so, you know, it's, it's in my job description to go out and do all this stuff. So whether it gets run or not, I still get paid the same amount of money from the company. Um, other years, I'm completely freelance, which means, yeah, I could go up there. We could spend eight hours building a jump today. I could possibly get amazing shots out of it and it could go nowhere. Definitely the best is when a company wants just full usage, they want catalog, magazine, they want to do the full buyout. And, you know, I don't, I don't have a set price for that, depending on the company, you know, I'll, 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 I'll work with them to, uh, with, you know, what their budget is. Um, but that, that pays the most because they're getting a lot of usage out of that one shot. Um, other than that, uh, Usually magazine ads pay pretty well. Hopefully, hopefully it'll make it as an ad or a brochure or full buyout, and then uh, magazines don't pay that much. But magazines are how you build kind of like your, your street cred, if you will. Like that's The magazines are almost sort of like your, your portfolio, I guess. That's how your shots get out there. That's how your name gets out there. The first thing that a photographer is going to find out is that it's really cold out there. There are many, many days that I'm out there. My, no, my, my toes are completely numb. Can't feel my fingers. A lot of times I'm just mashing down on the top of my camera hoping I'm hitting the shutter button. I always shoot with gloves. A lot of guys can't shoot with gloves. Like they, I don't know why not, but yeah, I shoot with gloves. I think a lot of people don't realize how much work goes into getting a shot. Like to go out and, and build a jump, you guys are gonna see takes a lot of man hours. Like I said, once you get that jump built, the, the weather may change, may sock in, your riders may not land their tricks, or like I said, you might get a great shot that just never gets run anywhere. So, at the end of the day, I was shooting uh, that stump with the Canon 5D Mark II, which only has a, a flash sync speed of 200, but I was shooting at 640. And I actually do this quite a bit because a lot of time I don't want to ever, I don't like setting up my flashes and having them just cover the entire scene because I think that makes things look flat. So a lot of times I'll do real selective lighting and one of the ways that I do that is I'll, I'll intentionally set my, my uh, shutter speed higher than the sync speed which will then darken the rest of the, the frame. Um, but put the rider right in the light. So luckily it worked out that that this shot, the rider was way up in the top part of the frame. But a lot of times, you know, I'll be, I'll be shooting a vertical shot and I'll put the rider up in the upper left corner because I know he'll be still catching flash up there. Or if he's up in the upper right hand corner, so I'll turn the camera over and be shooting like this. So I actually do that quite a bit. I shoot, I shoot faster than the flash thing. I would say definitely if you're planning on shooting snowboarding, make sure you're going to devote pretty much all of your time to it because it, uh, it, it eats up your time pretty quick. Quit it!